On slide 71, we turn to an overview of the uh, plot menu choices. So when you are in the um, M-plus editor, you see at the top, plot, and you click on it and you get view plots, and then you get this whole selection of plots to view. And here is the list given more clearly. We've looked at histograms, scatter plots, and between level scatter plots. Now for DSEM, we're going to be interested in time series plots. Uh, time series plots is for each individual, each ID, and also another choice is the average over IDs. We also have the possibility of showing a histogram of the number of subjects per time point. So you can see the coverage per time point. <clears throat> and we're going to take a look at the time interval plots which has to do with this misalignment in time that can happen due to the t-interval option. And then we have the three standard Bayesian plots, Bayesian posterior parameter distributions, which gives us the estimates and the um, standard deviation and, much, and, and confidence intervals for the estimates. And we have the Bayesian posterior parameter trace plots, which shows you uh, the development of the parameter estimates over iterations and Bayesian autocorrelation plots which has to do with the quality of the uh, uh, variation in the estimates what we would call in an ML setting the quality of the standard errors. We're going to take a special look at slide 72 the T sorry the time interval plot for one person, ID equals 20. Uh, we've looked at this person before on slides 14 and 72. And you may want to go back and compare to those slides uh, when you uh, study this slide. So we're going to take a look at 12 occasions per day. That's T interval equals 2, gives you 12 occasions per day. But we're only going to take a look at the first two days to uh, make it simple. So we have 24 time points on the x-axis down here. <clears throat> and the time points on the x-axis represent the values of the time variable, uh, the name that you give the uh, variable, time variable that's going to be used for the uh, computations created by the um, t-interval option. So that corresponds to uh, the bin number that we talked about before, integer values 1, 2, 3, etc. up. Uh, now, in this plot, you have uh, observed time in red and the new time midpoint, which shows you the misalignments in uh, blue, I guess it is. So, for instance, uh, at time point 5, at bin number 5, you know, which is the 8 to 9 time range, we have, uh, we have two uh, times. We have... Uh, we well there we have uh, observed time 10 observed time 10 10 was moved from uh, the higher bin because we had an observed time 11 as well and we uh, had to move 10 down to an earlier time so we got this discrepancy right here and actually that's the maximum discrepancy across all time points not only these first 24 time points but because but across all of them at time point 5. There's none bigger than that. So uh, there's pretty good alignment for this um, ID equals 20 when we use uh, T interval 2. And now the average, the SMSE here is the average discrepancy between uh, the uh, observed time and the new time midpoint uh, across all the time points for this person. And that's what we say down here. And if we see some discrepancies also here for, um, this is uh, hours equals 16, where the midpoint was 17. So there's a discrepancy here. And hours 18 with midpoint 19 with the discrepancy there. You saw that on, um, on slide uh, uh, 70, I think it is.
This uh, new time midpoint is also the, uh, the name of that variable in the saved data on slide 69 to 70 is underscore new time. Just to orient you in this. So you can scroll through different IDs in these time interval plots and take a look at to which extent there is a, an important discrepancy between the red and the blue. And again, the maximum discrepancy is given over all the time points for a person and the uh, average. Okay, going to slide 73 then, here you have time series plots and this time it is for the uh, positive, av positive affect averages. So on the top left you have uh, when you use t interval equals 1, you have this pattern over time. This is for average averages. And uh, if you use t interval equals 2, you get a pattern that looks more dramatic. But uh, many of these uh, extremely low points and high points are for a single individual. So it looks more dramatic than it really is. And when you look at this time series plot in the uh, in the M plus plot, you can actually uh, hover or click on this point, and you can see how many people are in each point. I'm going to demonstrate that later. Uh, at the bottom, we compare time interval one versus three, and with time interval three, we have uh, uh, a much smoother development, but you're almost lost the pattern here. So you would have to change the, um, the scale of the y-axis, which you can edit in the plot, to see what kind of pattern uh, there is. Now this is uh, averages uh, with different choices for t-interval. Now on the next slide, 74, we do a plot for uh, four selected different people and for only for t interval 2, for the t interval 2 case, that is the top right picture in the previous slide. So you look at this and you see a lot of holes here, which is missing, missing time points. So it looks a little bit like Swiss cheese here, a lot of holes in it. And uh, some people have more dramatic development over time than others. So it's actually then hard to see a pattern in the data from any one individual. And the value of DSEM is that it combines information across individuals to get to see the pattern for the population. And you see it more clearly. And we're going to take a look at different ways of looking at that DSEM generated pattern. On slide 75, I turn to uh, the plot menu option of between level histograms. And I'm going to show you three kinds of between-level histograms for means. The first one is the observed sample mean for each person. So you take the average over time for each person and then plot the 240 persons in the histogram. Very down-to-earth and straightforward. Option number two is the estimated, model estimated, between-level mean for each person. So that requires the factors option of the plot command. Factors referring more generally to uh, any latent variable, like a random effect in this case, the random mean. So the histogram in this case is based on the base estimates of each person's random effect value, average over 50 draws, as specified up here, from the posterior distribution of all parameter estimates, so that's the, the distribution that you have at the end when the uh, analysis has converged. Posterior distribution of all parameter estimates and in base the unknowns include not only the parameters but also the random effects that you want to estimate. This mean is referred to as B underscore PA for the PA variable and there's also the median of course. Now, the third option is uh, cluster mean, which is quite different, although comes out quite similar as well. For each person, this is the average of the random mean over all iterations during the estimation. 
So that's a little bit different, based on different sets of iterations than uh, number two. And this approach is used in the output option uh, residual parenthesis cluster. And it's referred to as PA, estimated cluster mean, in the between level histograms choice. And those choices are summarized on slide 76. So here are the three choices. And we are looking at the plot menu um, between level histograms, the third line here. And when you click on that, well, first of all, you see then that you have estimated factor scores in there too, because we have the factors option stated in the uh, plot command. And when you click on that, the window opens up uh, on the right, where uh, the first line is PA average over within, which is the first option. And the second option is this B underscore PA mean, or you can take the median if you want. The third option is further down here, and you don't see it in this window. So there you have the names and what they represent. On slide 77, I turn to uh, between level scatter plots, yet another option on the plot menu. And I'm going to take a look at um, how the estimated cluster mean factor scores, you know, the alternative number two, uh, relate to the observed average over within the alternative number one. I think number two uh, rather than number three is the way to go. So using factor scores is the way to go here. So we see a strong relationship between the two, and the observed sample values on the x-axis here, and the cluster mean on the y-axis. Strong relationship as you would expect in a reasonable model. And this is then for 240 uh, clusters, 240 individuals. And you can click on these points and it will tell you which individual is where. So we see some discrepancy here for some of these clusters, most likely due to missing data being handled better by the estimated cluster means as opposed to the uh, sample means. In a bigger model, you would draw on information from uh, other correlated variables in the model to do a, a good job for estimating the B cluster mean factor scores. I say more about the estimation of factor scores on slide 95 in the context of multiple imputations, which is an interesting topic that I find quite a lot of uh, practical uses for. And some of them are going to be shown in this talk, and some are going to be shown in a future DSIM talk. On slide 78, though, the last row in the plot menu here, like the variable distribution plots, is a useful plot as well. So that again requires factors in the plot command, and it's the same as we talked about, same procedure as we talked about in the alternative 2 for the mean. So it's the estimated between level mean or median, if you want, for each person using several imputations, several draws, 50 in this case, from the posterior distribution, that is the distribution after the analysis has converged, of all parameter estimates, including the random effects. Now this latent variable distribution uh, is created by the 50 draws uh, times the number of people. So you, use, you don't take the average over the draws, but you use each of these draws. That gives a very smooth representation of the histogram of estimated between level means, the histogram that we looked at earlier. And it's an interesting idea, this uh, imputation idea, that the, these random draws from the posterior distribution, they're also called plausible values. They allow in uncertainty in um, the estimates to be accounted for. So if you think about this, you, it could be very useful for a single person that you get not just one factor score or the factor score plus the standard error of that factor score, but you get a whole distribution of 50 values for this person. So a much better representation of the uh, random effect for this person. And here then finally in the plot area, you can take a look at the histogram of the estimated between level mean, 
versus the latent variable distribution. So this was uh, alternative two, the estimated between level mean. And here you have the latent variable distribution, which is a more thorough going representation of this distribution. So you see the smoothness here, uh, but it represents the same general shape. And it's a little bit non-normal. No normality is assumed in the model, like it is for uh, every random effect. But the posterior updates this prior. The prior, the normality assumption is seen as a prior. It's a prior on the distribution. Updates this prior to a posterior using the information from the data. So that gives you a feeling for what the real data looks like.